Welcome to today's Facebook Live. Thanks for tuning in. It's always so fun every Wednesday to get to spend time with each one of you lovely ladies. For the most part, our viewers are women, primarily women, which I love women championing women. And I know I have felt that this fall season. So thank you all for being here. Um, Katie, you were the first person that I am seeing on here. Welcome. Um, and as always, be sure to say where you are from and support your local state, your country. It's so fun to make those connections. Our viewers are from all over the world and all walks of life, all different ages, and it's so fun to make those connections. Debbie is tuning in. Debbie, it's good to see you. And um, anyway, I am just gonna jump right on in here. Um, fall is coming and I feel that natural change in the season, in the weather, in the air, and it gets me so excited. Um, every single year, this holiday season is just so fun to start celebrating. Um, Darlene is tuning in from Oregon. We've got somebody joining us from Michigan, San Diego, California. Judy, it's good to see you. And Lissy Clark is joining us as well. Welcome, um, Heather is joining us from Colorado and Valerie is from Kansas. Welcome everyone. Laura J. Spencer just tuned in. Hi, Laura, it's good to see you. And Allison says, good morning from Australia. We've got Mary tuning in from Tennessee and Carol is joining us as well. Terry is from Little Rock, welcome Terry. And Caitlin is from, is from Florida and Cindy is from Michigan. So it is so fun to make those connections as always. And I just love that we have a space and a community where we can champion and encourage each other as women. And I love all of the positivity that I have seen over this last little while here um, on this platform. So I'm just really grateful for each one of you. Ashley is joining us from Maryland and Laura is just tuning in as well and Donna is from Australia. Welcome. Okay, so today we are going to be talking about fall family fun, things that we have that we are doing. I'm going to be talking about shopping and inflation. I just actually left my house and went shopping. I do a lot of mine online shopping because it simplifies my life, but to actually be in the store and to touch and feel product and things that I'm considering buying for myself, for my kids, for my family, I am just amazed at the cost of shopping and the cost of just basic household items. It is just crazy to me. So I am looking at stretching my dollar and stretching my budget this days. I need to, these days I'm gonna need to clothe all the little kids um, because they are having another growth spurt. So anyway, we're gonna be discussing all of that um, as well as life updates, questions that came in about dating. So stay tuned for that. Um, and I did have somebody ask, is Chad going to be tuning in for this live vlog? Will he be joining me? No, I forgot today he is out of town. He is in Anaheim, California at a business conference. So unfortunately he's not going to be on this live video and he's actually working right as we speak. So he won't even be watching the Facebook live until later. Um, Tanya and Denise have just joined us. Welcome everybody. Okay. Um, let's see, inflation is coming down. Oh, that's good. I'm glad. I didn't read the rest of your comment, but I have not been following um, all of, you know, news and all of that to really know where we're at with inflation, but I am praying that it's coming down. Just the cost of like detergent, I'm amazed how much money just to wash my laundry costs these days. And my kids are super sensitive, so we have to use um, all free and clear. Um, I have tried making my own laundry detergent to stretch a dollar, but it just didn't turn out right. Maybe some of you have really good recipes for homemade dish detergent that are allergy friendly because my kids have like the most sensitive skin. Um, gas prices in North Carolina have gone down. That's good. They're still rather high here in Southern Utah. Eggs are really expensive right now. Somebody just said, I agree. And when I had chickens and I would love to have chickens again, um, the cost of just the feed to feed my chickens was the equivalent of buying it at the store. Um, so while I did have a healthier product, I felt like of like home, they're not homemade, but like eggs that come directly from my chickens and we eat them that day. Um, I loved it, but just the cost to feed the chickens. Um, so anyway, just inflation with everything, clothing, all of my kids, those are things that I am looking at a lot right now. So especially you young moms, I don't know if you can relate to that right now when your kids have gross spirits and you're like, 
shoot, like back in the day with Shaden and Landon, I used to just go to a store here in this town called Kid to Kid, which is like a secondhand clothing store for little kids. When we lived in Bellingham, Washington, there were a couple of other places that we would go um, and find secondhand used items. But having quintuplets, it is so very different because I not only need five of things, I need like 25 things, right? So if there's five to seven days um, per week that the kids are gonna be at school doing different activities. We need all of that times five per day because realistically that's how frequently I'm able to do my laundry. So I went price shopping all this last week between Carter's, Amazon, um, H&M, Zara, uh, and then I went in town to both Walmart and Target. I've also been to two different Rosses here in town and TJ Maxx. Price, price compare, comparing shoes, um, pants, because it's starting to get cooler weather, and long sleeve shirts and jackets. And it is just crazy to me. Okay, I've talked enough about inflation, but um, I will be doing some shopping back to school shopping. I kind of feel like we have transitional type of shopping here in Southern Utah because I live in the desert and it's still hot, but there's some activities and things that we do in the evening or the early morning where it is colder. So we're going to need those items transitioning into fall and winter. So if any of you have any thoughts on how to stretch a dollar, especially when it comes to clothes shopping, I would love to hear it. Um, and I'm needing like twos and threes of different things. So anyway, um, there's that. Um, and then fall family things that the kids and I are looking forward to. I really want to go pick our own pumpkins this year. And I really want to do fall decorating here, um, in my home using fresh flowers as well as fresh pumpkins and things that remind me of fall. So this year I'm going to decorate a little bit differently than I typically do for my family and the kids, especially the girls are getting excited to create a beautiful space and a home. And so I really want them to be a part of that. So those are things that we're looking forward to. Um, Caitlin says she loves fall too. I love it too. Um, I just, I wanna make that home, like our home just feel fresh and clean. Um, somebody, Carla just asked, Chad didn't wanna come to your live. He did, but I forgot he was out of town today if you missed that. Deborah, it's good to see you, she's from Michigan. So um, decorating with more muted colors is kind of our thing in our, in our home. Landon appreciates aesthetically pleasing items too in our home and not super loud colors because we already feel like our life is super busy and full. And so anyway, at the end of this video, I'll kind of show you some of the things I've been working on when it comes to decorating in our home. Um, but I'm really excited while the kids are gone at their dad's this week to be creating just a more warm, cozy home here. Um, we've got somebody joining us from Texas and Sabrina Miller just joined us as well. Welcome. Pat says, I love only summer. I think my favorite is actually spring and then summer, but I do love fall. I do love Halloween. To me, it is a celebration of childhood where kids can think about um, what they wanna be for Halloween, but also that they can be anything that they choose to be. And so it's just fun and magical for my kids. Um, anyway, okay, tons of questions that came in. So let's dive on in to some of the questions that were asked. Oh, I was gonna share with you guys some of my favorite products. That was the other thing. So um, maybe I'll just jump in right there. Um, this is my new favorite product that I just found. Um, have you guys used dry shampoo? Like we have been so busy um, the last few weeks and it has been so hot in Southern Utah. I have not washed my hair as frequently as I would like to and having long hair, it's like a process just to blow dry my hair. Um, so this Batiste uh, dry shampoo in blonde is really great. It helps me like stretch washing my hair for maybe two or three more days. Um, and then this other product that I'm really loving is from ColourPop. And this is an eyeshadow palette that I picked up at uh, my local Ulta Beauty, but I'm pretty sure they sell this at Target too. I've been looking for ways to stretch my dollar when it comes to makeup, um, just with everything. And so I really like this product. It's in soft colors and they don't have like obnoxious names. Like some of these fancier companies when it comes to eyeshadow, um, just have like obnoxious names and I just don't want to support brands like this. And so this brand ColourPop has just a really nice neutral palette that'll look good on just about anybody. 
Um, these colors are called like Pop a Bottle, The One, Enamored, Made You Blush, Blossom Up. Anyway, I'm really loving this brand and I think it was like $14. Um, so anyway, those are a couple of things that I'm really enjoying um, using these last couple weeks. And then people have asked different questions about some of the books that my kids have started reading and that we've been reading together as a family. So I will share some of those here in a minute. So the first question we have comes from Caitlin. What do the Quints like most about fall? I would say hands down Halloween. They love the candy. They love sneaking candy out of Grandma Smith's jar when we go over on Sundays for family dinner. Um, I think they love the nostalgia. I think Landon, um, really loves, he won't admit it, but probably still trick-or-treating in our old neighborhood, just walking around. He doesn't have to like go get candy and all that, but it just reminds him of his childhood. My kids love carving pumpkins, so that's something that we'll be doing this year. And that's something that my boyfriend, Chad, that I've been getting to know, um, he really enjoys doing too, so it'll be fun. Um, somebody just said, you and Chad are so cute. That's really sweet. Um, he really enjoys pumpkin carving and like supposedly intricate type of carving pumpkins. I don't know. I've never really done that. So I'm curious to see um, his hidden talent of carving pumpkins. So my kids, yes, they're excited about decorating for Halloween. They're excited about Halloween parties and get togethers and class parties. So it's really fun. Um, Diane, oh, Laura asks, are any of the quintuplets identical? A lot of people oftentimes think that Logan and Lincoln look identical or look the most alike out of the quintuplets. I would say that's pretty accurate. I really think that Lincoln looks more like my dad, his grandpa Smith, and Logan looks like a blonde version of his Papa Allen on Skylar, his dad's side of the family. Uh, but no, none of them are identical. And I don't know how many of you know this, but with the quintuplets, they were infertility babies. I had a hard time getting pregnant. And through ultrasounds with infertility, I was able to see um, like after I had conceived the kids and we knew it, that I was pregnant, there were like three follicles left over or eggs, I guess. And so I didn't know until delivery if any of the quintuplets would be identical until they were born. And so it took a few days to realize like nobody looked exactly the same. They all looked very different and they all have their own unique special features and personalities, which make it easier to tell them apart, I think, in real life. But on camera and on film, I feel like the girls each kind of have their own unique style look. Um, personality, whereas the boys come across a little more identical and they're a little bit harder to tell apart. Diane asked, do you ever get them mixed up ever? She says, I would if she had quintuplets. Um, I think sometimes I get the kids mixed up. Like at the end of a really long day as a mom, when I'm just so, so, so tired, sometimes I'll call my kids the wrong name. And I hate that I do that, but I think every mom pretty much does that. So I do my best um, to call them by their correct name as us moms do. Um, but every once in a while I'll get Logan and Lincoln mixed up. And as of late, Daisy and Lily um, look a little bit more alike now that they all have shorter hairstyles. Um, Gina asked, have the kids decided what they want to be for Halloween? Violet is the only one adamant that she knows what she wants to be for Halloween. Um, she's really excited about that costume. The rest of the kids keep changing um, what they want to be. So I'm going to wait until they get back like next week and then I'm going to purchase the costumes. But they've got to be things that are affordable and budget friendly this year because we're really trying to stretch our dollar. We've got Lainey joining us from Scotland and Lynn just joined us as well. Welcome, ladies. Um... So yes, so I'm gonna be looking at things that are a little bit more creative and on a budget this year for Halloween costumes. Um, Sue Long asked, do the girls always dress alike and do they like to? Um, no, so now that the girls um, are going to, or the kids are going to school, the girls really like picking out their own outfits. So primarily every single day, I'm all about raising independent kids that can think for themselves, make their own decisions and express themselves in healthy ways. So the girls, for the most part, wear different things to school. 
Now, every once in a while, the girls will say they wanna be twins or triplets, and then they'll pick, pick something matching. Um, that really makes Violet mad sometimes when she wants to um, be her own person that day. So sometimes Violet will get dressed and Lily will copy her and Violet doesn't always like that or appreciate that. And so it's something that the girls talk to each other about, which I think is kind of sweet. Um, and Logan and Lincoln, I never know what they're gonna wear from day to day. Like for the most part, they actually are really proud that they're like twins or quintuplets. And so they like to dress alike. And so whoever gets dressed first will oftentimes um, wanna match the other kid, um, but the kids have the freedom to choose for themselves. So that's been fun to see. When we do go to church, for the most part, all the quints um, wear matching outfits. outfits. When we do activities, like if we're going to be at a park and I know there's going to be a lot of people there, I actually appreciate having my kids all wearing the same thing or the same color. That way I can tell where they are from a distance a lot faster. I know every family of hired or multiples is very different. Um, and then also the other reason that sometimes I dress my kids alike is it's just cheaper to buy things in twos and threes when I find a good deal and um, do it that way. Okay, Sharon asked, do the kids still love books? They do. So to answer that question, I thought I would share with you guys some of my kids' most favorite books that we have been reading as of late. Um, I read this to Lincoln and he loved it the other day. A Kissing Hand for Chester Raccoon. Um, I really love, this is by Audrey Penn and it's illustrated by Barbara Gibson. Lincoln really loved this book. And I know being in a family with two different households with mom and dad and going back and forth, I do get a lot of questions about how the kids are doing with that. And this book teaches, I think, just a very beautiful and powerful way that a mother's love will always stay with her child no matter where they are, whether they're at school, whether at their dad's house, their mom's house, they're always loved. And so this was a simple way to teach, especially Lincoln, um, the power of a mother's love and that I'm always with him. Um, and then this is one that I've been reading to my kids recently and they really like it. It's called You're All My Favorites by Sam McBratney, illustrated by Anita. I can't, I don't know how to say her last name. Um, my kids sometimes will be like, it's not fair or you love so-and-so more than you love me. And so this book has been a really great way to talk about how a mama bear and a dad bear both love each of their children equally, but very different and for different reasons because they're each unique and special. And my kids, especially the girls, really comprehended this book and really loved it. So that's been another favorite. We've had this one that we've read year after year and my girls love it. The series Flicka, Dicka, and Ricka. This one is called Go to the Market and it's by Madge Lindman. It's a book about identical triplet girls. And I love, if I'm gonna sit down and read a good book with my kids, I love teaching principles and morals and values to my kids. And this is a really great book. I'm pretty sure, is this the one where they wanted, I forget this one. I think it's like, they might like want a new bike or something. And so they problem solve how they can earn the money themselves. And it teaches kids about work. It teaches them about family. Um, and it teaches them about giving back and um, planting a garden and the joy that comes from gardening and flowers. So anyway, we really love this one. Um, and then this one I just pulled out. I bought this one last year and I'm excited to read it again this year. It's called Emily and Daisy by Elsa B. Scow. I love the Elsa B. Scow um, book series. They are whimsical with beautiful illustrations. Again, they teach wonderful morals, values, and principles to kids. And I love that it keeps my kids engaged and it gets us talking and problem solving and all of that. So anyway, those are just a few of the books that we have purchased. I mainly purchase those off of Amazon. And then there are books that I like to get from local thrift shops. That is my favorite way to buy books. Um, but if I want a specific book, I usually head to Amazon. Okay, um, our next question is from Cynthia. What size of dresses are the girls wearing now? They are size six, except for Daisy Kate. She is now filling out, which tells me she's gonna have another growth spurt and she's gonna get taller soon. So Daisy is a size six X and the other girls are right behind her. So they do wear size six now. 
um, when it comes to dresses. Okay, Sandy Stone asks, how are the kids handling outside play at your home? So this is something that I did mention in our last vlog. Um, the house that I am renting now is a townhome and it didn't necessarily have a backyard. It does have a back patio, but I find that the quintuplets really aren't playing on the patio that much. Um, we do have a patch of grass in the front of this yard and I feel like it's sufficient for what my kids need. And I just feel like my kids are becoming more creative in the way that they play. And so they do play outside. Um, some of the things that we really love doing is when Chad gets off of work, he likes to come visit our house and spend time with my family. And so we've been getting out and just walking up and down the street and around the neighborhood on skateboards. I think for Christmas, I'll probably get my kids scooters, something like that, just to get them outside. And there are walking trails in this new subdivision and neighborhood. They're building like crazy out here. I'm actually looking at a tractor outside my house that's super noisy that's been there all day. Um, and so my kids just find that play is play and it really doesn't matter how large, how big the space is, we can be happy and create happiness in a beautiful home no matter where we live. So it's been really fun to see the kids um, get creative with that. Um, Bees.artstudio asks, do you keep the neck size up for kids clothes? How much do you keep without feeling overwhelmed? So I think this might be something to show in an upcoming vlog, kind of my system of how I do this. Um, so I typically prefer shopping off season where I can scoop up good clearance deals. Um, I know Target has a ton of clearance right now. Walmart has had some too. So I just went there and I needed to kind of take inventory of what we have already and what we're gonna need for the upcoming season. Um, so I keep several clear bins labeled girls clothes and boys clothes and um, I shop off season and ahead of season. And if I find a good deal, I buy it in multiple sizes. Um, so things like shoes, I typically purchase on an as needed basis. I don't really stock up on those items. Um, so some of the things that we already have are items that people send to us from the post office, um, from birthdays, from Christmas. And if they're too big for the kids, I usually save them. And then the kids can wear them um, when they fit. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I do it. And then there'll be some things like when my kids have a growth spurt where we just need something new. And so I will go to the store and purchase those items. Um, so yeah, I keep a bin system. And then when things are at like their lowest price, I typically do a lot of um, shopping for my kids at the end of July every year because I can get really good deals on spring and summer wear. Um, so I thought that was a really good question. I usually keep up until now, I've kept like one or two bins for the girls and for the boys, but now that they're getting older and now that they're getting bigger, I might need one extra bin. So that's kind of my system of how I do it. Um, and then Sarah asked, what is the best part to me about having quintuplets? I think the kids would say they always have a best friend to play with. And then I would say they always have somebody to fight or argue with as a mom. Um, my favorite thing about having quintuplets is I think that joy is expansive. Like I think when I think about having quintuplets, I think of joy. Is it harder? Yes, it is a lot more work and it really stretches you as a person, as a mom. Um, you oftentimes have to think outside the box, but it has these moments where it is just magical and I don't know how to explain it. I know it's kind of a common thing that other hired or multiple mothers have expressed. It is hard and day to day is mundane. It's monotonous, it's work, it's busy. I think that's parenthood, I think that's motherhood. But then there's these moments where you see your child serving another sibling or you know bending down to help pick up a toy that somebody else dropped or noticing that somebody else is sad and they wanna give their sibling a hug or they wanna help them at the end of a bad day, you know? So moments like that are just precious to me and beautiful to see my kids learn and grow in those ways. And I think that the bond that they have with each other is gonna last a lifetime and it's really unique, it's really special and I love that. Um, I think 
my favorite moments are honestly still reading with my kids and usually I'll start out reading to just like one child or two kids and then they all come and want to participate in reading and learning and discussing and talking and sharing and I love those moments gathered together with my kids both one-on-one -on -one and collectively as people to see them learn to see them grow and it just fills me with so much joy so I do have a sponsor an up-and-coming sponsor that we are so grateful for and they have given us this most beautiful recliner, so I'll be sharing that soon, but it's been the perfect spot for cuddling with my kids as they are learning how to read. Um, okay, my next question that came in, why did Shaden pick a two-year school versus four years? So Shaden is in college, and he picked a two-year school because he had the opportunity to play soccer at a collegiate level. Only 1% of kids, um, get to go on and play at the collegiate level when it comes to soccer. Um, and it is just a very small, small minority of kids that actually get the opportunity to do that. And so this school um, scouted Shaden out at a camp that his dad, um, Skyler, took him to last, was it last summer? No, the summer before that, once he graduated, scouted it out and offered him um, a possible walk-in position to their team but possibly a scholarship in time and so he accepted it he's getting his generals in he's studying sociology um psychology uh and it's been just a wonderful experience to see him grow as a person to see him so proud of his own accomplishments and the skills and life skills of growing up and learning how to provide for himself, take care of himself. Um, and I just hope, you know, I did a good job as a mom in teaching him those life skills. So he's really enjoying it. He is talking about transferring to be closer to Tatum, his sweet girlfriend. They have been spending just as much time as they possibly can at separate schools, getting their education in. And I'm so proud of each of them. They're doing really, really well. Jen asks, what does Landon enjoy most about school? I asked Landon this specific question yesterday as we were spending quite a bit amount of time together. Um, he said his favorite thing about school is choir. He loves the choir teacher at his middle school that also teaches at the high school. Um, somebody asked, how do you discipline the little kids? We'll get to that in just a minute. Um, Landon said his second thing that he really loves about school is lunchtime. So I thought that was a pretty honest answer for a 14 year old boy. Landon really loves the arts. He still is studying um, guitar and taking guitar lessons and he is learning a little bit of voice. So that's been a beautiful thing when I first wake up in the morning to hear him um, playing his guitar and a little bit of singing um, because he has an early morning guitar lesson with his uh, guitar teacher. So that's been really fun to see him expand in that way. Um, okay, CardsFan76 ha asks, have you gotten to know your new neighbors yet? Yes, it's been really, really fun um, getting to know my new neighbors in my new neighborhood. The cool thing about being a member of my faith, specifically in Utah, is there's a lot of Christians here in my local community um, that are just good people. And so the networking has been great, figuring out who lives close to me. I've really been getting to know my neighbors next door. They have a little boy that is my kid's age and is in Violet and Lincoln's class. And so that's been really fun to have him over and make those friendships. And then my niece, Kylie, my sister Kate, has three kids. Kylie has been really good friends with their daughter next door for a long time. And so it's been fun to see her at like family dinners on Sundays. And so getting to know this family, they are just really inspiring to me because the mom next door, like she had a baby at a really, really, really young age. And she worked her tail off to get her education in, to put herself through school, to raise her daughter as a really young teen mother. And I am just so impressed with this mother next door. So I find her inspiring. She works super hard. And oh, that's so sweet, whoever sent that. Um, so I am just really inspired by some of the stories that I hear of how women become mothers and how hard they work to make ends meet to provide for their family. So it's quite inspiring to me to get off my butt and get to work. Um, because if she can do it, I can do it too with quintuplets and seven kids as a single mom. So, um, okay, uh, let's see. Oh, somebody asked, how do you discipline your kids? So 
Every child is so different. For the most part in our household, timeouts work well. For one of my kids, it's a little bit different and he needs more of a reward system like stickers or stars or something on a chart where he starts off with, let's say five stars and then he loses stars. So he's gonna need some sort of a reward system to understand cause and effect. And so um, I'm actually gonna be learning a few more parenting skills um, from a friend who's gonna come over and teach me some things that'll be really helpful with my kids. And so I'm really excited, looking forward to that because I wanna be the best mom I can be for my kids. And I want them to grow up to be good human beings that contribute to family life, that are just good people and, and contribute to their local communities. Um, that's really, really important to me in teaching those skills and life skills to my kids. Okay, Laura asks, is there room at your new house for flowers? Um, since it is townhome living and yard care is done by, what do they call it, like the landscapers, um, it looks a little different. So I have considered buying fake flowers for my front door just to put in a pot and on my back patio. Um, but for now, I'm adding just pops of color through real life flowers that I'm getting from grocery stores from Walmart and then also like Harmons and Smith's just to add fresh bouquets and flowers. It just makes me feel good since I can't actually plant flowers at this space. So just creative ways of bringing the outdoors in has been really making me happy as of late. Um, somebody said you're an excellent mom already. That's really kind of you to say. Okay, Jackie asks, how old are you? I will be turning 40 in about three weeks. So I will be 40 years old um, on October 24th is my birthday. Sarah asks, how long do you plan to be at your current house? So I am renting for one year's time um, just until I get settled in and decide um, where I would like to be. The cost of living here in Southern Utah is higher. Inflation, as we've talked about, is higher. Um, Francis is tuning in from Guam. Welcome, so glad you're here. And Michelle just joined us, just joined us as well. Um, so for a year, and um, then I can decide from there where I would like to be, but I'm really loving um, these Salisbury homes here in Southern Utah. They do build them cheap, but they do build them affordable. And so um, for families like mine, it is just really helpful um, in lowering my overhead as much as possible. So I'll be here for sure for one whole year. Tara asks, um, well, she says she would love a house tour now that we are more settled in. And she says, I love your simple style. Thank you. Uh, I think my style is simple because it's affordable and I can thrift it, find secondhand items, and shop local finds that are affordable for my family. So I really appreciate that comment. I would love to give you a house tour as we are getting settled into our new space. Um, Latrell says she's from Florida and pray for them for the storm. If you can include Florida in your prayers, that would be much appreciated, it sounds like. And Cass has just joined, just joined in as well. Welcome, Cass. Okay, our next question, do we cover all of those? I think so. Yes. Okay. Um, our next question is from Diana Bridge. It's about dating. She said, have you guys argued yet? I'm a therapist and that's my question for newish couples as they proceed. Have Chad and I argued? Um, I, I wouldn't say argued, but have we had disagreements? Yes. How do we handle them with kindness and love, patience and respect? Um, I think our first disagreement was actually like if we decided to get married, if I decide to marry anybody, would I want to change my last name? That is a hard one for me because I want to match my kids and my kid's last name is Scott and I've been Scott longer than my maiden name, which is Smith. And to me, Scott and Smith are about the same. So if I remarried and if people Google the Scott quintuplets, like I want to be associated with that because those are my kids and that's my family. So we had a little debate about keeping my last name and I was like, you know, I think publicly I will stay Jamie Scott because that's who I'm known as. But I think privately I will change my last name to whomever I choose to marry. Uh, but that is a hard one for me because I have been Scott for such a long time and I want to match my kids. So that's really been our first disagreement. Um, and then there's been just a few other things of like, 
where, but we're able to have like healthy discussion, which I really appreciate. The art of communication with Chad just comes really easy and he's very, very kind. And so he never raises his voice at me, which I really, really, really appreciate. He's really patient with me. And if I'm wrong, he doesn't say you're wrong. He just is like, let's it somehow, I don't know. Like he just is like very kind about like, okay, it's not the best idea, but maybe try this instead. So anyway, he's really patient. That's really been our first disagreement. Um, Elena asks, what does Chad do for work and does Chad open doors? Um, so for work, Chad works for the county here in Southern Utah. He works a lot with athletes. Um, he works with a lot of golf tournaments here in Southern Utah, as well as Ironman um, here in town. And he's in Anaheim right now. Um, for a business conference where a lot of people um, get together and talk about hosting different events in different communities all over the country. So that's kind of a little bit about what he does for a living. Um, he really does love working with people and he enjoys his job. And anyway, I hope that answers your question. Um, does Chad open doors? Yes, and he doesn't do it because anybody's watching. He does it because that's how he was raised and that's just him. He's a little old fashioned, which I really love. And um, he doesn't just open doors for me. He opens doors for my grandmother and my mother. Um, he helps out around my home. Um, he helps my parents out when they need something. He is very cognizant of what needs to happen and notices things sometimes before I do with my kids about like even what Landon needs so that he doesn't ever feel left out. And he's very inclusive, he's very kind, he's very down to earth. These are just some of the characteristics that some of you I think are noticing kind of mimic my dad. And in the beginning, some people, there was a little bit debate on here about whether that was my dad in vlogs or if it was a new guy in the picture before I even mentioned it. So he has a lot of the same qualities and characteristics I really admire about my own father. Um, Chad has a lot of those same things too, which I am looking for eventually when I do choose to remarry in a spouse. I want a partner, I want a best friend, and I want somebody so kind and somebody that treats me really, really well like my dad treats my mom. So um, anyway, hopefully that answers Elena's question. Becky Lynn asks, if you get married, will you still continue to vlog and would you change your last name? Okay, so I just barely talked about that. Would I still continue to vlog? I go back and forth about this. If I didn't have to, I don't know necessarily if I would. It is kind of a hard business to be in. Um, it's not really my forte. I do love sharing joy and um, capturing through documentation, through film, the joy that I have for my family and the joy that comes from family life and raising quintuplets and raising my two sons. I do love sharing that. And so I may or may not continue to vlog. I don't, I don't know. That's been one that I've really considered as of late and it's had its moments as of late that have been really, really hard. And I've really cried because people are just not always nice on social media. I don't know why they think they can hide behind a screen and just be mean because I would never walk up to somebody in real life and tell them what I think about their looks or their family or how they do things. I would just be gracious. And so I have these moments where I want to shut the world out and I don't want to do it. But then I have these other moments, like when we do these Facebook lives where I see women championing, supporting women, women who are single moms, women from all different walks of life and all different ages that we have on here. And I just feel like if people like me stop doing social media, I think it will be missed. And so I kind of go back and forth on that. Um, for now, I'm gonna say yes, I will continue to vlog and share a portion of our life, the part that I do choose to share with you all. Um, would you change your last name? Yes, publicly, no. So publicly, I'll continue to be known as Jamie Scott, but private life, I will change my last name. Um, okay, Kathy asks, how did Chad react when you first said quintuplets? How about his friends and family? Um, he, so I met Chad originally through Facebook dating um, and he reached out and said hello and I was like, shoot, every time I join Facebook dating or these new dating apps, I get asked out within like an hour and it just scared, scared me so bad. And so I noticed he and I didn't have any mutual friends, but I really wanted somebody that was clean cut, clean shaven, 
um, that looked like he cared and was in a good space in his life. So there were not very many people clean shaven on these dating apps. So that's how I personally narrow it down and getting to know new people. Um, so he reached out, said hello, and I didn't say anything, deleted the app, and I was like, okay, this is a little overwhelming for me. I'm gonna take a break and just stick with the one LDS Mutual dating app that I'm on. Um, well, anyway, a couple days later on the LDS Dating Mutual app, um, they did something called speed dating, and it's kind of been this beta testing thing where you can have five-minute conversations with different people if you're interested, and then you continue the conversation if you're interested after that. And so anyway, he swiped up yes, and I was like, oh, I remember that guy from Facebook. I should give him a shot and give him a chance and get to know him. And I looked at his profile and it was just kind of clever. I think his profile said something like he's a sushi classy grocery store kind of fellow. And I was like, you know, that's relatable to me because I'm not fancy, I'm simple too. So we started talking and I let him know probably within the first halfway through the conversation that I had quintuplets and he didn't even skip a beat. He was so gracious and he was like, that's really cool. Tell me more about that. And so. Um, through these dating experiences and getting to know different people, I've experienced some people that are like, never talk to me again, because they're like, I don't want that, or I don't want kids. Anybody that says in their dating profile they don't want more kids, I usually just am like, okay, then they're not a good fit for me, because it's not like I want to have more kids, but I come with children, and it's unique, and it's different, and it's special, and I want somebody to understand, or at least want to understand that. And so, we talked for a little bit and he was very upbeat, very bright, very bright eyed, which kind of reminds me of my son Lincoln. So we continued our conversation later and then he took me out maybe a week or two later and he was just very kind. So um, when it comes to his friends and family, him telling them that I have quintuplets, maybe that's a question for Chad, I'm not sure. But uh, tomorrow's vlog, maybe it'll come out Friday, stay tuned for that. I do take the quintuplets up to meet Chad's family and the reaction of his mom was so precious, so good, and so kind. She sees each of my kids as unique, special individuals that they are, and she wants to call them each by name. And that has been something that she is really good at with all of her own grandkids. And if I choose that path with Chad, she would be a part of our lives. And that's really important to me that my kids are loved and seen and valued as individual people, but also collectively. Um, the unique special part of being quintuplets. So that was really fun um, to see that. Um, his own family, like his daughter is in college, her fourth year of college, and she has babysit my kids and she's so patient, so kind. He has a son that's Landon's age and he has loved getting to know Landon and um, is really patient with the quintuplets, surprisingly. And then his, his older daughter, who's 16, is just very independent, but very kind again, and very helpful, helpful when it comes to the little kids. Okay, now, if any of you have questions, I'm happy to take any of your questions now. That is all of the questions that were pre-submitted in the DMs between Instagram and Facebook and private messages. Um, so I am happy to take um, some of your questions now that some of you might have. Um, about family, about life, about raising quintuplets, about fall, about school, anything you can think of, I'm happy to take questions. So you're welcome to ask them now. Um, Amy says, hi from Tampa. Hi, Amy. Shelly Winters is just joining us. Hi, Shelly. It's good to see you on here as well. Um, any of you moms that did end up remarrying, did you keep your same last name or did you choose to change it? I would love to know that. Um, Tina is just joining us as well. Tina, it's good to see you. How do you handle homework is Caitlin's question. Um, so far, four out of the five kids, well, all five of the kids, um, their homework primarily is reading daily for 20 minutes. Lily, her specific teacher has a homework assignment for each of the kids. Um, and so at the end of the week, the teacher's primary purpose in assigning homework is to teach responsibility to the kids. And at the end of the week, if they turn in their homework folder, they get a little bead. And 
when they get enough beads, they can make a bracelet. So Lily's really motivated to get her math assignments and homework done. Um, so the other kids is primarily spending time and reading and getting them excited about that. So it's doable. Um, somebody said they kept the last name until they remarried. They were much older by then. Okay, that's really helpful to know. Um, somebody just asked how are Shaden and Landon doing? Jody said she changed her name when she remarried. Okay. Um, Shaden's doing really well. He did have an ankle injury, and so he was a little worried about playing in the game this last week. So he did play injured, and so he's just been resting it, icing it. Um, he's doing really well. He's getting his generals in. He is working a little bit. Um, he's happy. He is one of two team captains of his soccer team. And he has teammates from all over the world um, in his specific dorm room. He, okay, somebody said they renamed, they changed their name last year, I think is what the comment said. Um, and Paula says she's used both names, okay. Um, so Shaden's doing really well. He is navigating new relationships with some dorm roommates from Germany and kind of teaching them the ways of Americans, um, introducing them to things like Taco Bell and blizzards from Dairy Queen, which I hear are life-changing um, for, oh, I've got somebody walking through my backyard. <laughs> um, so anyway, he's doing good. Landon's doing good. Um, Landon is going through another growth spurt. My kids are just growing so fast. Um, Landon's doing good. He is finding his own sense of identity, um, through style, through preferences, um, even how he wants to decorate his own room. And so it's been really fun to see him grow as a person and decide the type of person and man that he wants to become. So they're both doing really, really well. They still have a really close bond and they still stay pretty connected to each other. They play video games. Um, we've been FaceTiming a bit. Um, Nikki says, Evening Jamie, you look well. Thank you. I feel really tired today, actually. Um, this heat has been killing me. Okay, I do have a favorite show that I'm gonna be binge watching while Chad is out of town for the next several days. Have any of you seen the TV series Call the Midwife? I know you gals from the UK have probably seen that show. It is, I think they have 13 seasons now. I love this show. I thought it was going to be lame when I clicked on the first episode and I started watching it back in the day um, when I was baking and catering for a couple of different cities, private catering, theater productions, um, things like that. And so I just kind of needed something on in the background. And so I started watching this and I love that it is stories. Um, Jennifer said she just started watching season two. So I'll try not to give away too much. Um, but I love that it is a celebration of womanhood and sisterhood and life and humanity and goodness. I love it. And just about every episode I cry. So last night I watched season three, the very first episode and, um, it actually just brought back a flood of memories. So I actually didn't sleep very well last night because I still have moments, a little bit of moments of PTSD when it comes to delivering the quintuplet. So season 13, first episode, they do have a mother that does infertility and surprisingly finds out upon delivery, she's not delivering twins, she's delivering um, quadruplets. And so it just brought back like a ton of memories and I had a difficult time sleeping, but it was so, so good that first episode. And every show just reminds me of the beauty and power of womanhood and how women need women and good people in our lives. Um, and so it's just been fun. I feel like they're long lost friends every time. Um, every time I watch that show, I just feel like I'm coming home. It's probably going to sound super silly. Um, and then I was going to share the coolest experience that I had. So Chad's last name is Mick Williams. Um, and I had a girlfriend, I hope she's watching this, reach out, um, reach out and um, message me that I hadn't seen since the first grade. And my kids are in first grade, as you guys know, we were best friends in Las Vegas, Nevada, and she moved to Iowa, to Des Moines, Iowa, and I was devastated. I loved her so very much. We were best friends. We lived in the same neighborhood, different faiths and religions, um, different family history and backgrounds, and we became pen pals up until I was probably 13 or 14, and then we just lost track of each other. I don't know if she moved, but the letters I would send would come back. 
And um, when I was pregnant with Landon, I was living in Bellingham, Washington, and this would have been 15 years ago. She reached out and found me through Facebook. And it was such a beautiful experience to reconnect with her and find out that she had kids too, that she was happy, that she was well. Well, just recently, about a week ago, um, since I mentioned the name McWilliams, she reached out again and said, hey, I've been watching like your life with the quintuplets all this time. I had no idea. I thought we had lost track of each other from like 15 years ago. So she reached out and um, it's been so fun to reconnect with her. We exchanged phone numbers. And just this morning, she sent me um, some pictures of when we were both first graders at her birthday party. I'm pretty sure she had just turned seven years old. And so I have like these massive like 1980s mop of white bangs of hair and just like long blonde platinum hair. So she looks exactly how I remembered her at age seven. So it's been really fun to reconnect and I'm excited to reach out to her and get back to her. So April, if you were watching this, I will be sending you um, a return of text um, just with some things um just nostalgic so it's so fun to make those connections and just have good people in our lives and i'm so grateful for each one of you that you tune in that you join me um somebody said your positivity and smile are contagious and she is joining us from australia thank you so very much i'm just really grateful for the support system that i have here on social media of you wonderful ladies um i'm grateful that i have chat in my life and i'm grateful for a wonderful support system of friends and family and I know not everyone um, is able to have that in their life. And so being that person for someone else yourself um, and extending a helping hand. I know navigating this as a single mom on social media has not been an easy thing for me. And I'm really grateful for the love, support, and kindness that you have shown to my family, to my children, to myself, to my children's father. Um, and just all the respect that has been given. I am just so very grateful for that. So anyway, I'm gonna get going here um, and probably take a little nap and reach out to my girlfriend that texts me from Des Moines, Idaho, because I've not talked to her in forever. Michelle, I love you right back. Thank you, Jackie, for being here. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this live video. These are actually my very favorites because I feel like I get to connect with all of you lovely people. Um, Anyway, love you all. Hope you have a good Wednesday and I'm excited to decorate for fall. Oh, and I was going to show you all real quick um, this lovely little thing that I have been decorating um, right here. So I've been decorating my house with fresh florals and pumpkins from the grocery store. I know the kids are gonna love it. And then lighting candles at night just to make it a little bit more cozy in our space so anyway stay tuned for more great content my next up and coming vlog i take the quintuplets and landon to go hang out at chad's parents house and it was lovely to see their reactions and how they loved my kids so stay tuned for more great great content love you all and hope you have a great wednesday we'll see ya bye